We just love the Lord over here on the day. And we're not ashamed to tell everybody to know that Jesus saved us. Amen. Like I said, our pastor, uh, my brother, Pastor Patrick Schaefer, is away at a conference, but we, he left us in capable hands. Amen. We thank God for this woman of God. I believe she was here day one. My God. And if she hasn't been here day one, it feels like she was here day one. <laughs> Listen, listen, if, 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 if the, the service gets too quiet, honey, she gets noisy on us. And that, that's all right. Listen, listen. We are a praise God church. Amen. Amen. She, she's a jack of all trades here. She does, she wears multiple hats here. She'll do the camera. She'll sit up and teach us. She'll pray for us and minister to us and teach us. And one thing you got to understand about being at City of Faith, you're going to learn how to do multiplicity of things here. And so we thank God for her. She's no stranger to this ministry. Uh, I'd like to introduce some percent to others. Our own minister, Glenda High. Let's say amen as she goes. beautiful faces. Amen. Oh, it is so great. Yes. The first person I want to give honor to, though, is who we were just singing about. Yes. Jesus. Yes. God Almighty. Yes. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Yes. And then I want to give honor to my pastor who, in his absence, has entrusted me to bring the word of God yes. to the people of God. Yes. I give honor to my church family. Yes. Who puts up with me yes. on a consistent basis, and they they uh, hold in my arms and they support me. Yes. And then I give honor to my own family and extended family. Yes. They know me and they love me anyhow. Yes. And then to all of my precious friends from so many different aspects of my life. Yes. Dirt buddies here from sixth grade, Barbara, I see oh, you back yes. there. And then I went on to, to uh, college, believe it or not. And Dolores, what a wonderful sight it is to see you. I see my colleagues, and I see my lion dancing friends, my AKA friends. I see friends who were brought into to the fellowship from my husband. And I thank you so much for coming, Alley Posse, and those who are there, uh, who are around the Alley Posse. And just everyone who has come out to be a support to me. It is comforting for me to look at your faces, and I love you. you. You may be seated. I'm not going to keep you any longer because I just may have you here too long. Oh, yes, and I see, uh, I see my beautician back there. Hello. <laughs> we do have all of everybody in the house, and I am so glad to see you. I need to have some direction from the Lord. And so I need to pause right now for station identification. Yes. Father in heaven, how I love you and I praise you. I magnify your holy name, for you are God almighty. You are king of kings and lord of lords. And we thank you that you have brought us far yes. all this way. Yes. Lord, we thank you for each person who has come to hear the word that you have put in my belly today. Yes. We thank you, Lord, and ask that they have listening ears to hear. And then, Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. You are the preacher. You are the person in control here today. I just relent to you and say you do what needs to be done in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. We're going to go to the book of beginnings. That would be the book of Genesis. So it's not going to be very hard to find because we're going to even start with the very first Chapter, the first verse. We stand for the reading of the word at, at City of Faith, so if you would do that, I won't keep you very long. It's not very hard to find that first chapter unless you've got a whole lot of indexes and other pieces of paper and things like that in your Bible. 
You've got your sword with you. Amen. We will begin reading at the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. I'm going to skip down to verses 6 and 7. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Oh and it was so. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We know that the word of the Lord is already blessed, Amen. so we don't have to ask for any blessings over his word. I'm sure that you have read or at least heard about the creation story, yeah. where God creates the whole world and all of his contents in just six days. So I'm not going to deal with the details of what was created and on which day at this time. But I want you to notice a pattern. One thing that I noticed was that after the initial verse, every succeeding verse in the entire chapter starts with the word and, mm -hmm. except for one, and that would be verse 27, which starts with so. Okay. Both of those words are conjunctions, which mean that they join together some thoughts. And what I, I thought about chapter one was, it is the equivalent to one long chapter, one long thought. But that isn't the pattern I wanted to point out. Notice in verse 3 how the verse starts with the phrase, and God said. The rest of the sentence shows the results of what he said. Then when we skip down to verse 6 and 7, look at that very carefully. Just look at the first three words of verse 6. It says, and God said. And to complete that, verse 7 says, and it was so. This is the pattern I want you to focus on. God said, and it manifested. Now look down at verses, the next verses. 9, that pattern, and God said, and it was so. Look at 11. And then 14 and 15 go together. But when we get to verse 20, the pattern reverts to the first time God spoke in verse 3, where the details are actually done. Uh, his creating is by speaking is, uh, is shown in the next verse 21. And he adds an endorsement. Let's look at verses 20 and 21. And God said, but the last part, says, and God saw that it was good. Uh -huh. That was his endorsement of what he had created. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now the pattern resumes in verse 24. Mm. And God said, and it was so. All right. Now we're going to get Bye. to when God embarks upon his highest creation, which we say is his creation of man. Sometimes the way man acts, we have to wonder about that. But it says that God created man in his own image. He counsels with the Trinity. Now, perhaps that's why, and God said, is repeated three times in that account. Look at verses 26 through 30. And God said, that's the first time. Then in verse 27, we have the soul. Verse 28. We have a brief phrase, and then we have, and God said, uh -huh. and verse 29, and God said, uh -huh. and finally in 30, it says, and it was so. Yeah. All right. All right. That was just the first chapter of the Bible. Uh -huh. And we see those words, and God said so many times, 10, if you were counting, <laughs> that we should get the idea it must be very, very important uh -huh. to say and not just say any old thing. Notice, God did not say in verse 3, ooh, it sure is dark out there. I can hardly see my hand in front of my face. No, he wanted light, and that is what he said. That is what he called for. He called it things that be not as though they were. He calls things that don't exist into existence. Now let's go back to that highest creation. 
You know, Adam didn't have a childhood, but he was homeschooled. He was taught by his father, God. And one of the assignments that God gave Adam is found in Genesis 2, 19. It says, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. An awesome responsibility. Now since man was made in the image and likeness of God, man possesses the elements of personality similar to those of the divine person. The amplified version of Ephesians 5.1 says, follow his example as well beloved children imitate their father. So to help you follow God's example, I come to you today with this exhortation. You'd better watch what you say. All right. Amen. I've got three reasons to support this admonition that you better watch what you say. The first reason is God is always listening. Yes, he is. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And then we also say in, from, uh, from Isaiah, the prophet, in Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11, and I got this from the message translation. Just as rain and snow descend yes. from the skies yes. and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing their work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry, so will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed. Ah. They'll do the work I sent them to do. Yes. They'll complete the assignment yes. I gave them. Yes. In the Bible, we have been given exceeding great and precious promises uh -huh. that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature. Yes. According to one person's count, the promises in the Bible number 3,573. Mm -hmm. And we are assured in 2 Corinthians that all the promises of God yes. in him, that is in Jesus, yes. are yea and in him, amen, yes. unto the glory of God yes. by us. Yes. If these promises uh, that fit our circumstance, if there is a promise that fits our circumstance, then we need to declare them, make them known formally, officially, and explicitly. Yes. Many years ago, when my daughter was away in college, it was crunch time in getting tuition paid. How many of you have been there? All crunch right. time for tuition? Yeah. If not there, you've been crunch time on something. Uh -huh. I have been faithful in tithing, uh -huh. studying the word, being a diligent worker in the church, etc. Uh -huh. And I called on the Lord. Uh -huh. I mean, I had a session in my basement all by myself, uh -huh. singing and praising, worshiping, praying, and crying out to yeah. God and reminding him of his promises to me. And like Jacob, I was determined not to let go until he blessed me. And then all of a sudden, the doorbell rang. Well, I wanted to ignore it because I was having my session with the Lord. And I said, well, I guess I better go re answer the door. And when I answered the door, there was the answer to my prayer. God had sent my sister over. And this is what she said. I don't know why I'm here. I guess God had sent me. She didn't know anything that was going on with me. It was my sister who met my need. But I knew it was a nothing but God. Now furthermore, we need to hide the word in our heart. For the Bible tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. When a situation arises and we don't have time to think, just react. What we have in our heart will spill out of our mouth. Yes. Just a few weeks ago, a close friend of mine was relating the time when she realized she was about to be involved in a car accident. She said she saw another car coming straight toward her. And she said all she could say was, God, he's going to hit me. And I said, well, you called on the right name. Yeah. She said, well, I don't know where it came from. It just came out must have been from that abundance. Yeah. 
Now, somebody else might have had something else in their abundance. They might have had some expletives come out. Or they might have been calling on another god with a little g. She closed her eyes, and when she opened them, her car had been turned to the side. The impact was to the side, thus averting a head-on collision. That person is here today. Praise the Lord. Glad about that abundance, Dolores. This brings to mind that a prayer can be very short. One word, Jesus. Since Jesus is the word. But we need to guard our mouths that we do not use God's name in vain. That's right. I have an issue with this OMG usage these days. Right. Maybe I'm not hip, but it's, in its casual application, it just seems like it's constantly breaking the third commandment, taking the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The Bible says God will hasten his word to perform it, and he dispatches angels to minister to the heirs of salvation. Another friend recounted to me her experience when she was faced with an impending danger. She had to go under a long, dark viaduct to get home, and she saw, saw a man approaching her as if he were up to no good. She said with much authority, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. She said the next thing she knew, that man was doing this. Uh -huh. <laughs> like he was bound. Uh -huh. Just kept spinning, just spinning. Now, she didn't know how long he was in the spin cycle uh -huh. because she walked on by him unharmed. We have the authority yes. to use yes. what God yes. has told us to yes. use. Yes. Uh, that hidden word doesn't have to apply to such dire circumstances. Uh -huh. It could be a reminder to yourself that if you're trying to perform a challenging task, you can say, I can do all things through Christ yes. which strengtheneth me. Yes. And when, if you have trouble getting a good night's rest like I sometimes do, personalize Proverbs 3.24. When I lie down, I shall not be afraid. I shall lie down, and my sleep shall be sweet. Yes. 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 So I told you the first reason why you better watch what you say, yes. because God is always listening. Yes. The second reason that you better watch what you say is because Satan is always listening. Yes. Right. Now, people often say the devil is busy. Well, he's just doing his job. Yes. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. As recorded in the book of Job, he goes to and fro in the earth, walking up and down yes. in it. But the Bible instructs us, be sober, yes. be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, yes. as a roaring lion, yes. walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Yes. In the book of Revelation, he is referred to as the accuser yes. of the brethren, which accused them before our God day and night. Yes. I can just imagine that the devil often says, objection, ignorance of the law excuses no one. Well, that's really a legal principle, holding that a person who is unaware of a law may not escape liability from the law just because he's unaware of the content. So many times we say things, and when challenged on it, respond that we didn't really mean anything by it. You know, like, ooh, my feet are killing me. That dress is to die for. Uh -huh. All right. ooh, I'm never going to get these bills paid and get out of debt. These kids are driving me crazy. <laughs> it's flu season, and I know that I'm going to catch it, like I always do, and be sick as a dog. <laughs> One thing that I don't understand is why people claim conditions, like my arthritis, my diabetes, my asthma, my anything. We are going to be held accountable for every That's idle right. word we speak. Right. And an idle word literally means a vain, thoughtless, useless word, a word that accomplishes no good. Uh -huh. We are warned not to give place to the devil. Yes. Don't give him an opportunity. Yes. The message translation says, don't give the devil a foothold. Uh -huh. Now, a foothold is a firm or secure position that provides a base for further advancement. Uh -huh. In Proverbs 6, 2, the Amplified Version says, you are snared with the words of your lips. Yeah. You are caught by the speech of your mouth. Yeah. 
Do you remember the song, Joshua Fits the Battle of Jericho and the Walls Came Tumbling Down? I can come up with a pretty good reason why the instructions that Joshua gave to the people to carry out this strange battle plan to circle the city 13 times within a seven day period. The word says, and Joshua had commanded the people saying, ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. Uh -huh. Now people are walking around the walls of Jericho all these days, not saying anything. Because I can imagine if they had talked, yeah. they probably would have been snared by such words as, this ain't making no sense uh -huh. at all. <laughs> I could have come up with a much better plan than this. Yeah. Well, you know, that Joshua guy, I always thought he was kind of nuts. <laughs> and so on. Yeah. You do know where murmuring and complaining got the children of Israel as they wandered in the wilderness 40 years, don't you? Yeah. In taking a closer look at the two terms, I discovered that complain means to express negative feelings of pain, displeasure, dissatisfaction, or resentment. Whereas murmur means to be obstinate, to complain and grumble in a low voice. One writer painted the following picture. Murmurers covertly stir up trouble. They are gossiping, manipulative cowards who try to propagate a personal agenda by inciting riot and discontent while operating in alleged anonymity. Ooh, that was a dark brush that painted that picture. And in the book of Numbers, there is an extensive account of the 12 leaders uh, of the tribes of Israel who were sent to spy out the land of Canaan, the promised land. The results reported were, the results were reported in a ratio of 10 to 2. The larger number came back with an evil report. Uh -huh. It was a rumor staring up the people. They said they could not attack the inhabitants of the land who were huge uh -huh. and much stronger than they. Uh -huh. There were giants in the land, mm -hmm. and in comparison, the 10 spies said that they were as grasshoppers. Uh -huh. Well, the murmurers and, com and complainers had started out in the book of Exodus. Now, that was shortly after experiencing the miracle of crossing the Red Sea on dry ground. They had started out that early pronouncing their own death sentence, complaining to Moses that he had brought them out of Egypt to kill them, their children, and their cattle with thirst. And they continued almost throughout the book of Numbers with these murmurs. Would God we had died in Egypt. Well, would God we had died in this wilderness. Behold, we die. We all die. We perish. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. Uh -huh. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned, yeah. said in the Bible. Yeah. Those negative words that the Israelites were saying were just fodder for Satan to gain a foothold. Yeah. Now, Caleb and Joshua were the two in the 10 to 2 ratio whose report was filled with faith that the Lord would bring them safely into the land and give it to them. And they had this analogy rather than that grasshopper analogy. They said, the people are but bread for us to eat. They were the only two from the generation that had left Egypt. And that was for those who were 20 and over who actually made it to the promised land. That was over 600,000 men, not counting wives, children, and the mixed multitude that had gone out with them. The others had been snared by their words. A whole lot of murmuring and complaining. Selah. Those of you who read the Bible and you know about Psalms, often it says Selah, pause and think of that. Uh -huh. Well, so far you have two reasons why you better watch what you say. Because God is always listening and Satan is always listening. The third reason is because others are always listening. We often do not realize how much influence we have over others' lives. We say things especially to our children 
and don't think they're paying attention. But we may discover that they really did have ears to hear. And not only we as parents and guardians must watch what we say to and over our children, but we must also guard what others are speaking over and into them. We don't have to accept everything. We can act on their behalf and reject the negative stuff. Now, I must contest the adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know, that saying was first uttered by slaves uh, when there was slavery going on in the United States. Of course, we can still wonder if it's still going on. But the idea was that if the overseer only cursed you and called you humiliating names, that was much better than receiving brutal lashes from his whip. Well, I realized that the slaves had to do what they had to do in order to cope and survive. And no doubt, a physical beating would hurt, but words do too. How disheartening it is to see a young mother in some public place hurling profanities at her child, calling them all kinds of names. Just imagine how much damage these verbal sticks and stones are doing. The scars may not be evident on the outside, but they can do a lot of damage on the inside. Because the Bible says that the power of of uh, death and life. No, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's what it says. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The Living Bible says it more succinctly. It says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. At a memorial service I attended recently, a young man who was the nephew of the deceased reflected on words he distinctly remembered his aunt saying to him when he was a youngster, six or eight years old. You're a handsome young man. He said those words made a great impression, giving him confidence that helped mold him into what he would become. Those few words of life sent him soaring, and he is still up in the clouds because today he is the captain of a major airline. Praise the Lord. Those words have an effect on our, on our children. Pastor Schaefer sometimes refers to a movie when he's trying to convey a, a point. All of the city of faith know that. And he just cannot believe it. He, has, he always says, who has not seen such and such movie? And my hand is usually the first one to go up <laughs> because I don't watch many movies. But there was one that I watched, and it had this touching and memorable scene. Viola Davis may not have won an Oscar as Best Actress for her portrayal of the maid, Aveline, in the movie The Help. And her grammar wasn't correct. But she made a great impact, instilling a sense of self-worth when she spoke the powerful affirmation into the life of the child in her care. And if you know it, won't you say it with me now? You is kind, you is smart, and you is important. And when the toddler May Mobley repeated it, Abilene said, that's so good. Now that may have been fiction, but it is a good illustration for us to realize that we have the power to influence the future for generations to come by what we say. And it's not only children who are always listening. Adults, too, whether they are spouses or family members, friends, neighbors, co-workers, church members, or even those that we meet on the street. Do we preach one thing but say something different when the deal goes down? You better watch what you say. Now, let me bring this to a close. In revisiting our Genesis text, we see that God had a desired result. He had an inner image or an idea of what he wanted to create and then said. The words he spoke were directly related to this inner image. He used those words to get that image from the inside to the outside. What you need to use as the basis for your inner image 
And for the words you speak is the word of God. How do you go about that? I'm so glad you asked. One way is to study and be committed to memorizing scripture. Make it personal. Rehearse it often. You know, while you're washing dishes or you're driving or, or whatever. The way you might have learned the Lord's Prayer or the 23rd Psalm or even the words to your favorite song, be it rap or real songs. Please. No. Don't, don't email me on that. That rap's got to go. In John 6, 63, it is written, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And we know that that's Jesus speaking because if you have uh, a Bible that has red letters in it, every yeah. time it says red, it's what Jesus is saying. So I subscribe to you that it would behoove you to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I often declare a medley of Bible verses that I attribute the Holy Spirit with for putting together so they flowed and told a story. It was a reading that I did for a church ministry that I was a part of tw almost 20 years ago. Today it would be called Spoken Word. Well, how apropos. I entitled it, How to Avoid Truth Decay. And you may be familiar with that. But one day when we do Spoken Word, Perhaps I can share it with you then. But as I take my seat, I just want to leave this reminder with you. And God said, and it was so. Since you are made in the image and likeness of God, then you'd better watch what you say. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that you gave us what we need in your word. Help us to open your word and find out what it is that you have to say to us. And we know that your word will not return unto you void. It must prosper in the thing that you sent it to accomplish. And so we ask that this word that has been delivered this day will take root and we will be considerate of what we say. And I'd like to ex extend this invitation to you. Some of you who have never asked Jesus to come into your life, you have that opportunity to say today that you are sorry for your sins and yeah. that you want God to, to let his son Jesus come into yeah. your life and be your savior. Yeah. So you don't have to make a hard thing about it because the yeah. word tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be saved. Yeah. So if you do not have that relationship with Jesus, you have that opportunity to come right now. Yes. And those around who are saved, if you will pray for those who are not saved, yes. this is a tremendous decision. It affects eternity. Yes. And so we are considerate that those who do not know Jesus in the part of their sins will reflect and ask him into their lives. Yes. And you may say that, I am saved, but I, I'm looking for a church home. Yes. Hey, you found it. City of Faith will, will be glad to have you. We open up our arms to you and our hearts, and you can come in and have community with us. You can fellowship at the City of Faith if you so desire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we see that there is none. But be blessed, and you better watch what you say. Amen. How about our own minister, Glenda High, on the day? Amen. Amen. Uh, there's somebody in this room who's been telling me the same thing for the last 39 years. Uh, Linda. As a matter of fact, while she was preaching, they said, What did you say? Yeah. I said, Okay, thank you, Mom. <laughs> Amen. Now listen, we thank God for watch what you say. That's a good word. That's a good word. That's a good word. That's a good word. That's just not for kids and teenagers. It's for grown folk. Be careful what you say at your job. Be careful what you say and who you say it to. <laughs> my God. Be careful what you say on Facebook. Twitter. <laughs> oh my God. Some stuff come back to haunt you. Once you get in cyberspace, it's there. <laughs> okay. Now listen, it's time to worship.